be proud of the reinstatement. Thank you. I call Dr Deborah Russell. Madam Speaker, as this cathedral rises again in the next few years, I think it's going to express many things, a rebirth, a regrowth, a new hope in Christchurch, and a real symbol of the community. But I think one of the things that it can symbolise as it grows again is actually the process of our robust democracy in Christchurch and in this country. This bill has come about through a really robust democratic practice that has come from right through the community. You know, it came about in some part because of the operation of our legal system with litigation. And people might not regard that as part of our democratic practice, but it's actually a really important way that we discuss how things ought to go. And I know that that litigation was long and hard fought but eventually it brought us to a conclusion and brought some ideas out and brought it, uh, people to the place where they could gather and actually talk to each other about how to go ahead from there. I think, so that was, uh, that was the first part of the democratic practice. The next part was the reports, and in particular the Cathedral Working Group report. Again, a really robust discussion where people tried to gather together and come to a conclusion. And that is the basis on which the cathedral will be rebuilt. There was a real gathering of voices around that particular report of people who mattered, um, from Heritage New Zealand to the Christchurch City Council to the people who own the church, the church property trustees. So that kind of democratic process happened as well. Then there was leadership from members of this house in the previous parliament. And here I think particular tribute needs to be paid and deservedly so to the Honourable Nicky Wagner, who fought really hard to get a solution across the cabinet table in the previous cabinet. And so in large part, the growing of this cathedral again will be due to her, but also to the current minister, the Honourable uh, Megan Woods, who has got this bill to the stage where it is getting through the house today when the actual solution is in place. So there are people from right across the house who have worked on this bill to bring it together to the stage where the cathedral can start to grow again. Then there was the robust select committee process where we drew on knowledge from people who live in Christchurch, um, from Dr. Duncan Webb, from yourself, Madam Speaker, as a member of that committee, from, um, from um, Matt Ducey, who is white bats based down that way, from uh, Maggie Barry, who has a particular heritage knowledge to bring to it. Every single member of that committee had something to contribute as part of our process. And of course, we had the expert assistance of officials, people who brought their knowledge and expertise from the select committee officials, the clerk of the committee, and her assistant who helped us to get this process completed so quickly and really so very, very smoothly, to the officials in the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet who brought their particular expertise to it, and the people drafting the law. This was all part of our robust system of government. And it's all expressed in this act, this act that will help to reinstate the cathedral. So I think as the cathedral regoes, it not only symbolises the community gathering together again in the heart of the community of, of Christchurch, but it also expresses what government richly understood can do. So that's what I've been thinking about in terms of this particular bill. But I just wish to add a final reflection about the cathedral itself. I've visited many great cathedrals. I've been very lucky to be able to do so. And as I was thinking about some of the great cathedrals I've visited, I've realised that the thing, in some ways they all merge into one, they're very similar in many ways, but there is something special I remember about each one, and it tends to be something to do with words. So from Salisbury, I remember one of the four extant 1215 copies of Magna Carta sitting there in Salisbury Cathedral. In Winchester Cathedral, it's Jane Austen's grave, um, which really sticks in my mind. In Durham Cathedral, it's the, uh, the Tomb of the Venerable Bede. All wordy things. I first visited Christchurch Cathedral uh, just before my 17th birthday on a family trip around the South Island. And because I was brought up in a very Pākehā household, in a middle-class white household, I didn't know much to Rio. But there was a plaque on the wall there with that, those words that we all know now. 
Hey Tangata, hey Tangata, hey Tangata. That's what I remember from Christchurch Cathedral. And I hope that in years to come, when I visit that cathedral again as it is reinstated, I hope to see that plaque again with those words about the people, the people that it is all about. And that's why it is important that this cathedral is reinstated. And that's why I recommend this bill to this House. I call Matt Ducey. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. It's a great pleasure.